Hey, welcome to the Nobody Talks Shidduchim podcast. Uh, that's IJ here with Avery and Paige, and this is episode 52, uh, Navigating Shomer, part three in this series. We're going to have Rabbi uh, AY uh, join us for this episode. We have Paige here, and Avery, Avery is also with us. We hope you enjoy this episode. It's going to be really focused on how everything Shomer, things we've left out things we can get to and um yeah we'll be back right after these brief messages hey wipe he's here come on in have a wipe please take you know over there over there we are wow ladies and gentlemen i get the pink the mishkiach ruchani of the podcast do we have a mishkiach ruchani no we don't have anything to do with um this is page page rabbi ay Paid, uh, 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 Rabbi Ay, uh, Avery. Avery. Uh, and Avery, this is uh, IJ. IJ, Avery. Oh, hey. nice to meet you, Shara. Okay. <laughs> so you have to speak directly. Right? Yeah, in the mic. Yeah, you right know, in the mic. On. You know, you know. How uh, we're in Rabbi Ay's former room here. Yes. He's never been on. He's only called. It He's called in. Way. He's like, whoa. He's only called Look in. Look at your beard, Look man. At Look at your beard over there. Wow, you're looking good. You look. You're looking good. You're. You know, we were just talking about people like you looking sexy uh, in, in shidduch dating over here, but you're a married man anyway. Okay, so we're going to continue in our in our conversation, and then Rabbi Ay will feel comfortable at some point to jump in. We're not going to just put you on the spot like capital of uh, uh, London. This place looks great, by the way. He's like, wow, wow, amazing. We, we need to hear you. We gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta. Can you not hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, there we go. You're, 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 yeah, yeah. This okay. place looks. Unbelievable! Wow, thank you. This is, the, this is the shit of podcast studio, right? But here. IJ also does interior designing. <laughs> He's a man of many talents. I have my own interior design company. Okay, so we were just on this topic, Rabbi A. Why we can, you know, maybe we'll cut it out, whatever. Well, we were just talking that, and Paige actually really had some epiphanies here. She never heard this side from the guys. That can you blame us for not wanting to break Shomer or to for stop not wanting to break for for, for for wanting to break Shomer? Or mm. to stop being Shomer because look at how from girls dress today. You know, I was just upstate and it was beyond promiscuous, beyond promiscuous. And I went to a modern place and it was like, you know, girls just didn't care. They're like ch- very chilled. Yes. And here's this, um, here's this like just aura of, looks and beauty and, 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 and now we're screaming at the guy. It's the guy's fault for breaking Shomer, Avery? Yeah, no, that's what we wanted to ask him, right? Yeah, yeah. But, so, you know, you know, I agree, yeah. Th- what the heck? Into, what the heck? Yeah. Like, what are they doing? Go to Gourmet Glot. Go yes. to Cold Save. Not Cold Save, maybe not. But go to go to the other Gourmet Glot. <laughs> go to, uh, go to, uh, uh, go uh, to what's, what's Juice by Julie. Evergreen, Evergreen. Look Evergreen. at how these people are dressing. Look at how even the young girls who come back from seminary, 1920, you know, even not from their spiritual highs, they're still dressing. Yeah. The skirts could be longer, but they could be just as tight. Not just that I'm as looking. tight, yeah. But you know, people are looking. People are telling stuff. us all this that good stuff. stuff. And by the way, I I give a I give girls a lot of credit for dressing up. I want you to say it's an anomaly today. I don't think there there are enough girls who realize the significance of just you know looking good in the beginning to reel them in. Say guys do the same thing. Yeah, I got a rabbi. I learned, you know, the doff. I did. I did. Tomorrow's doff already. It's done. So there's that allureness that you have to kind of reel people in, you know. But yeah, girls want to yeah. be seen. They just don't want to be touched yet. And they're and okay with that. Is. And they're okay with that, you know. Okay. So we were going to the next question here. <laughs> uh, Rabbi, I, why any halachic? Uh, any? He, 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 well, we want to ask him. He, the he have to bring him in. We can't just like. Yeah. Oh. oh eh, eh, <laughs> so chairman. He just he just he just saw his parents in law, you know, it's it's like whoa, whoa. <laughs> Still shook up. So I'm I'm being asked a halachic perspective, is that correct? Nah, yes. You're you're being asked your personal take. Your debate you give your personal What would you recommend you would to uh the people in relationship? Yeah, such a great conversation. You know, we, we I I'm I'm sorry I missed it. I, that, no, I, it's I okay. could talk about this anything sure. for hours, it's especially okay. with IJ. IJ is a man of a man of uh I'm trying to think, yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> Of, of, uh, me, of uh, a man. many linguistic uh, <laughs> linguistics 
Um, so here's actually one thing that we are going to be getting into, and this was a good mm-hmm. topic to kind of pivot into from Tsnias. We were discussing Tsnias. Uh, you know, everyone understood. Everyone heard that. People pick, you know. Now, here's the thing that really ticks me off, and I mentioned this before. This makes me want to tickle people to get at him. I want to tickle, tickle torture. Tickle torture the hell out of these people. When they mention, when I say, hey, you know, like, I'm not Shomer, or he's not Shomer, or whatever, and the Shadchan, the, the, the rabbi, what's next? They're not going to keep kosher? What's next? Breaking Shabbos? Two completely different things. Completely different things. Shabbos is really more oriented of how you grew up, you know, how, how, what, what did your parents do to kind of set you up for a good Shabbos environment? Was it well, etc. You're a bam. Okay. So we have that more of a, a, a cultural background thing. Right. And for example, Sephardic Ashkenaz, uh, you know, East Coast, West Coast, clearly there. Now we're looking at it um, on the kosher thing, which is so easy. Someone who didn't eat pork for, you know, freaking 25 years is not just going to say, oh, I'm going to ready to eat pork. Now, when we're talking about being Shomer, God has created you to procreate, to have lust, to want to touch, need to touch. The, 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 hello, Rabbi Ay. Didn't the didn't the Chachamim, didn't they kill the Sanhedrin? I don't remember who it was. Didn't they kill the Yetzirah at one point for uh, Gilia Arias? Didn't they kill it at one point? They killed it, and the next morning, what happened? They had to bring it back. No chickens laid eggs. Correct. So it is an mm. intricate part of our of our. It, it, in in order for the world to survive, yes, that is the strongest drive of mankind. Um, Freud actually says that everything, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on the podcast. Freud, yeah, yeah, like, everything, everything, everything. Okay. Everything. Freud says that everything can be, just don't say the rabbis are right. <laughs> Freud anyway. says that every drive in the world actually can be traced back to the sex drive. Um, he says every single drive, you might think of different motives, but if you follow mm. the wire long enough, it goes back to the sex drive. Now what you're, what you're saying is that the rabbis have said to you, Oh, you're breaking Shomer. What's next? Shabbos, Kashras, and you're saying that it's too completely. It's comparing apples and oranges. So, in in a sense, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna play both sides here because I really see. I, I'm gonna explain to you what I think he meant and what what I see as you meaning. Um, what he meant is that, I mean, I can't say for sure what he meant, but to me, they are the same. In terms of that. It's cut and dry what's allowed and what's not allowed. You have to keep Shabbos, you have to keep kosher, and you're not allowed to touch a girl unless you're married to her. To me, that's black and white. I'm a very big fan of we are humans. We all mess up, but don't pretend that it's okay. If somebody hits another person, if somebody eats non listen, we're all holding in different places, but you're never going to grow if you pretend that that's okay. Right? So... But at least admit that it's wrong. People have all sorts of rationalizations. Oh, I'm 30 years old. I've never been married. I'm so, I have such, a, you know, I'm, I'm drowning in desire. Yes, admit it and, and, and say, so even though this is wrong, I, I, I still, you know, I just couldn't control myself. That's very different than saying that, ah, oh, Shomer, it's not really a thing. It's, <laughs> it's not as bad as Shabbos. People, That's what Avery was saying, and I, you, know, you know I was saying. Uh, well, right, anyway, we, now we had this conversation last week. I know you want to get to both sides, so we'll, we'll discuss it. But we had that conversation about the guilt and shame factor that comes in psychologically from being from talking about, and it affects your relationship. It comes in. Ahuba, well, we should. Psychotherapists talked about it. We talked about it. That it, it creeps into your relationship that, you know, we did something that wasn't 100% kosher. Let's say somebody decides they're, you know, about to get engaged. They want to have Gadarim. Gadarim, we're not going to talk past 10 o'clock at night. One time, they speak to like 12 o'clock at night. Guilt, shame, I don't know, we did something wrong. You know, these things come into relationships and they start to manifest themselves as issues. So, yeah, you're right. What would you recommend to us to keep that out of the relationship. I mean, guilt and shame are part and parcel of, of humanity, right? Mm. So anytime you do something wrong, 
it's a natural reaction, especially, you know, they talk about, uh, what is it, Woody Allen talks about, uh, uh, you know, Jewish guilt. Yes. Uh, and we definitely, as, as Orthodox Jews, there's definitely a lot of guilt. Um, and that's something that you can speak to a therapist about, you can speak to friends about, you can speak to parents about, you can speak to Rabbanim about. I, I think that it's better to deal with guilt than to somehow sugarcoat things and live a life where you're able to rationalize everything away and just mm. pretend that it's not good. Guilt okay. is hard to deal with, but there are many things in life that are hard to deal with and you still have to do with them. It's hard to learn how to drive a car. I remember the first time I drove a car, I was terrified. Mm. And, uh, but since last week, I've gotten better at it. <laughs> I'm just testing to see if I'm just paying attention. I am. I um, am. We were talking about but, it. Uh, <laughs> but we're celebrating the month, you know. You know, in, in, in life, there are many things that are challenging and you deal with them and we slip. Everybody here, everybody sitting in this podcast studio and everybody who's listening to this right now has done things in life that they're not proud of. And you know what? That's part of being a, a human being. And you have to learn how to deal with that. You have to say, okay, I slipped. I'm going to get better. You can speak to people about it, right? But I much prefer that mode of living than just saying, oh, I did this. Actually, it was okay. Okay, I like that. And, and you know, I was But, but I was can I, yeah. I just want to say the other side also. Mm -hmm. when, when you're talking about that it's really comparing apples and oranges, that it's not the same, it's not the same level, that's also 100% true because very few, although actually I, I work with teens all day pretty much. And... Shabbos nowadays has become a real test for many teenagers because yeah. on the phones, they're yeah. so... I can't even trust imagine. Me, it's, it's, cannot even and imagine. And I'm gl glad, you know, when, when I was in my first year in Israel, is when the iPhones, is when iPod Touches were becoming a big iPod thing. Touch, yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah. Nowadays, we people Israel don't even together. know what an Yeah, IJ and I were actually in Israel together. That's true. Yeah. Our, um, first year, our, first year, our, yeah. our first year, you know, the iPods... And uh, the Blackberries, Sean at bed. Yeah, but but, but but no, no, there were no iPhones. There were the iPod Touch, right? The iPod, iPod Touch. Touches. And everyone got now a every yeah. now third and fourth graders have an iPhone, mm. right? So it's very very difficult to cool to shot. tell them to to tell if them to, turn to, into to shut off. Because, them have done that because they want them to call them younger. <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy, actually. But but it's so hard for kids to you know as addicted as adults are, and and we can admit that. To a certain extent, like Very I don't have, a, I don't have a browser palpable. on my iPhone because I'm not interested in constant. And I still find myself looking at it all the time. I log into yeah. my banking when I'm bored. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's because scary. you know because I don't have games and I don't. Because he's a Jew. Because he's a Jew. Exactly. Because <laughs> everyone else is doing it. But, 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 but I want to. I want to make. So so yeah. so. Uh, let me just finish my point. I'm sorry no, for getting sidetracked. No no go, go for it. But for for right, for the average person, for everybody here, Shabbos is not something we struggle with, right? It's not something we don't sit there on tenter hooks saying like, oh, man, I just want to watch that movie. I just want to drive my car. Very few of us. Kosher, the same thing. I used to travel all the time. I went to high school across the country from where, I, lived, from where I grew up. Right, right. And, and I, would, I, would try, I would be so hungry, and I would stop off in, like, Memphis, which is famous for its barbecue. And there would always be such good smells in the airport. It would smell good. I never even had one question in my mind like, oh, man, you know, maybe just this time. Relationships, though, the, the, the drive between man and, and woman, the, the desire to touch, the desire uh, for, for, for any of that yeah. is so overpowering. It's the strongest drive we have, yeah. right? And that is the way God created us. So to say that it's the same as Shabbos and Kashras is not really fair because, Shai, I love this guy. but again, it goes back to what I'm saying earlier. It is the strongest drive and therefore many people might slip, but don't sugarcoat it and say it's, it's not so bad Sure, sure. because it is wrong. I agree with what he's everything that uh, Rabbi A.Y. is saying. I just want um, to... I want to add something about, uh, you know, judgment here. Um, <clears throat> whether someone should be judged for making that mistake of, be of not being Shomer. And I think that it comes down to this, what Rabbi A.Y. said, which is, if they actually feel guilt, admit that it was wrong, you know, they made a mistake, and they're looking to not make that mistake again... No judgment there. We all make mistakes. However, if they're going to start rationalizing why it really wasn't their fault, why it wasn't it this, that, it wasn't a mistake, it didn't really happen, and start, you know, covering up and all that, then, like, yeah, I mean, it's fair to judge them that they're not being Shomer and they're just someone who's not Shomer. But if they actually feel guilty about it and admit they're wrong and, you know, hope that they're not going to fall into that again, then I think that you just leave it and consider them to be Shomer from now on, like you said, a born again virgin or whatever you born want to call again. it. Born uh, again. So well, I said Chuva. We uh, said Chuva, Chuva. Chuva. Yeah, right, I think it's right. the same. Be, sort do of Chuva. Chuva. Listen, do if you're saying the same thing as happened now, in Paige, one week, and then it happened two weeks. Okay, agreed. Then how so, much Paige, so think about our audience. So we have a person going in first shidduch date. Mm -hmm. They talk about Shomer, whatever second date goes well, third date. How do you differentiate somebody from what they say they do? 
if they're Shomer or not from what their actions were. Is there a way to tell a little bit about this person, what you think they're going to project them into the future, meaning someone who keeps halakha, like we said, there is that difference. Are we going to be judging their actions or their words mostly? What do you think? I think their actions. Actions mm. speak louder than words. I mean, if you don't experience it, what are you believing? Like, you you want to believe the person that you're dating. You want to trust that person. If you can't trust that person, then there's a big issue, deeper issue. So if they're saying that they're Shomer, yeah, they're words, but then like they're actually Shomer, and you see that, then that solidifies what they're saying. So I, I, kinda, I guess a little bit of both, but like <coughs> definitely action and trust. Mm. And you I don't got to worry about everyone else. You just got to be worried of the per. you know, you just got to listen to the person you're dating. And if that works for you, so you're what, on the same page. So what would you ask them in order to prove? I mean, you can't just, you can't follow them all day, I but you wouldn't so even ask them. I mean, uh, you would hope it's evident. Uh, I, I guess, can right? be a little naive sometimes. However, mm. I wouldn't suspect anything unless there's what to suspect for a reason. If I've heard things and if that happened, I would at some point probably bring it up. I want to hear the honesty. I want to hear the trust. I, I want to be able to trust someone. I need to know they're going to be honest. I need to know they're going to own up to it and not cover it up because you don't want that happening in your relationship further down the line. Hmm. So if they can't stop it and admit it or, you know, take um, ownership. Yeah, yeah. Then, then that's a big issue. Well, that Avery, that's uh, that's some, that's a, a, a solid point there. And where uh, do you bring up, uh, like, you know, let's say, do you bring up early or just you never bring it up if you've, you know, broken Shomer? It's funny. When I've gone out with girls from certain backgrounds, let's call it, or left-wing backgrounds, I know for certain, for facts, like, oh, they've had high school boyfriends. Some of them I even yeah. knew. Yeah. And there are things to suspect that, oh, maybe things did happen. And obviously that's something I want to bring up as we get further along in dating. Mm. You know, judging your experience versus theirs. And how do you think that? plays into what our relationship is going to look like. Like I said in the last episode, I'm somebody who is for boundaries, for Gadarim, no matter what, within terms of Shomer. Now, specifically what they are, it depends on each person, how you said it. Now, that's one thing I wanted to ask for AY, though, who has a very um, you know, diverse background in the religious area an more array. than we do. He has an array. What would you background. advise? But I, but I like boundaries? that. Yeah. But Avery, yeah, and with boundaries. But, but here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Go for it. But here's the thing. You know, we were just talking about bringing it up, right? Bringing it up. And Rabbi Ay can jump in on this one. What is there a difference between someone who played around, you know, horsed around, as it all, horsed around, you know, like, like the fourth grade baby say, he horsed around that guy. <laughs> he horsed around during um, high school, during elementary school, whatever, you know. She horsed around. Is there a difference between someone like that or someone who um, was in a shidduch relationship and broke, broke broke Shomer? Is there a difference there? Should we be judging people differently between the two? That's a good question. Um, when I was in yeshiva in Israel, I remember... Um, I remember they were giving a dating schmooze and one of the one of the guys asked the 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 Rebbe said so when it comes to dating do we tell the girls about our past girlfriends and the Rebbe looked at him and he said what girlfriend and the guy's like okay yeah yeah but seriously like <laughs> if we had a girlfriend like do we mention it and the guy goes and Rebbe goes, what girlfriend? I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea. <laughs> and it, this this happened Sounds like two like or three every times. One of his dates. <laughs> so the point that they were making is that what happened in your past, if it's no longer part of your life, if it's, if it's genuinely Genuine. no longer part of your life, it's, is, is it okay? No. Is it a mess up? Yes. But is it no longer part of your life? Yes. If it's no longer relevant, then it's really no longer relevant. Again, I want to emphasize that point. Don't make a mistake and say, oh, it happened in the past. Could it happen again? Yeah, but like it was a long time ago. If it's still part and parcel of your being, just because it happened 50 years ago, it still has to be brought up. But if it happened five years ago and you are completely changed since then, then it's not something to be brought up at all. Uh, again, say it's funny. I never had that in high school. So I, it could be people, again, suffer with this, you know, like people want real honesty and openness in their relationships. So it could be that people struggle with that. Like, oh, I want, you know, in their mind, they're battling. I want to be open with this girl. But, you know, I was told not to. 
So that's something I, I don't, I can't answer because I never, thank God, have to deal with that. Um, but the same goes to now. If somebody, it, it, it is different. If somebody is a serial toucher in, in, you know, he finds himself that he's dating girls two, three times and somehow he's, you know, breaking his arm and, and being, doing things that are not allowed, then yes, that is something that should be looked at very seriously because it's part of who he is now. And now uh, back to the kosher and Shabbos thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there it is. Well, I, and, and I, I just think, do you have any uh, cheeseburgers in your fridge? Uh, no. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, actually, I have like some very kosher, good, you know, delicious, kosher everything, and it's flashigs, but it's a nine days. So. Uh, oh, that's, that's an always, actual struggle. It's always like a, well, that's an actual struggle. Mm. Right. Now, I, I, Rabbi, anyway, a few moments ago, and Paige also touched up on this a little bit. I just wanted to make it very clear that I, everyone listening to this show, everyone out there in Shaduchim, everyone looking, everyone, you know, dating to, to meet the one, get married. I know that they all believe in the Torah. They believe the Torah is working. They believe the Torah is right. And, you know, a little looseness there to, for, to open to translation, right? But it's that the community is the issue is that the expectations of Shaduchim itself is what the issue is. It's not just, oh, the Torah is not for me. No, we, you know, I, they know it is, but the problem is, is that when you're facing these situations, there's, there's nothing taught. There's no book. There's no this. There's no that. We have, to, we have to figure it out on ourselves. We have to go to a therapist. We have to go to our rabbis, give them mild heart attacks discussing these things them pointing us to go here and to go there. And that's the difference of just saying, well, the Torah, I could pick and choose. No, there's, there's just nothing here in this gullus to, to give us, you know, assistance and kindness, except for this podcast. <laughs> um, I, I 100% agree. Yeah. I don't have much to say about it. I, I, I felt this problem myself is that a lot of people kind of reach this point. They don't know anything about navigating relationships. They don't know anything about sex. They don't know anything about what to do with their taivas, with their desires. They're, you know, I've heard, I, I've had this conversation with so many people. You're a single person and, and you just say everything else, everything else, Judaism has some sort of, I don't know if the word is replacement, but there's a way to fulfill that. You know, you can't have pork. Okay. You can have a great hot dog. You can't have, yeah, right. you can't listen right. to, right. you know, he's getting to, you it. can't listen to certain types of music for some people. Right. Okay. So you right. listen to other types of music. It's not as good. There's okay, always but a, exactly. a hector, There's always a, a something out there. Something out there that's a replacement to fulfill yes. to fulfill that aspect. But here you have a yeah. very primal, very real. Like I said, it's it's the most um, the most intense desire in mankind. And until a person's married, there's nothing to fill it with. Um, yeah. And and th I I believe that it should be spoken about more, and people have to figure out how to do it because when people bottle this stuff in. And they don't let it out, and it's not talked about. Um, people go crazy. Yes, yes, and, and that um, was one thing I was it's mentioning. Very, very difficult. I was mentioning that before when I was looking for a roommate, and I was interviewing these guys, and um, you know, I can tell which ones broke Shomer and which ones didn't. Uh, you know, mm. Everyone can Instagram me for uh, yeah. the specifics, <laughs> but I was just saying that I think girls can see that. Girls can see that. Oh well, you know, he's keeping it together. He's not keeping it together. Um, there are those signs, Avery. Like, like I said before, to go back on, you know, the guys versus girls subject, it is much worse for girls. Like, who are we kidding? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is whoa, much whoa, worse whoa, for whoa, girls. Whoa, 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 it is worse for a girl to go down to the level of breaking Shomer. Oh, it's worse. Because girls at a higher level spiritually. We know this. Yes, yes. It's a fact. And there is a stigma that goes into the communities. Like, IJ may have not said, but there is a stigma on a girl that has been around. That has had girlfriends. Well, yeah, it is according to the Torah. I mean, if we talk about, if we just go based on what the Torah has told us, well, you're telling the me Torah. If we're going by judging based off the Torah, yeah. girls are at a higher level spiritually. They did something in the past. Yeah, you could judge them more harshly. They oh, are I better than us. We, can... we are incomplete. They're complete. I, I. I don't think you can judge like that. I don't think we know the consequences for one person doing, you know, falling short. This Avera over another person. I'm talking. I'm not talking about a personal. I'm talking about as a general biological species. I, if we want to get into the personal, so each situation is different. I'm not going to judge. If a female, very uh, much so. Yeah, yeah, very much. It's 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 worse. For I will judge. Well, I will judge a girl more harshly, personally, 
if they were, then I would, I would judge a girl more harshly than a good friend of mine that said they weren't Shomer than I would anyone else. I would think. I, I don't would, think that's easier. from a Torah perspective, though. That's maybe from a personal perspective okay. that you might think that yeah. girls, first of all, they're just, you know, girls, let's say you might feel that she's more tainted than a guy, which is not necessarily no, fair, I, but that's I, definitely the I hold them to a higher standard. Or you might feel I hold that. to a higher standard. Or you might feel that because the strong, the, the drive, let's say, is not as strong physically for a girl, mm-hmm. which is what they say. Again, I don't know. We can ask Paige. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm not a guy, but that's what they that's say. That's what they say. For a girl. Yeah, I, for I, it's a girl. True. Right? So right. if you want to, if you want to say, first of all, judge is such a strong word. <laughs> yeah. If you want to say, I'm going to judge them stronger because of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a personal judge. thing. I hold in them terms of the Torah to perspective, higher, it's exactly the same. I hold them to a higher standard. I hold women to a very, I think they're much better than men, generally. Of course they I'm are. A, I'm a feminist. <laughs> women are better than us. They are, they we can work harder. They can multitask that's not a better. Feminist, uh, this is not, I'm a, well, pro feminist. They can do, do more. They can do whatever they want. And in this regard, that's the one thing, though, that they are better than us, than us at staving off sexually than we would be. Well, there are definitely more women that keep Shomer than men. Is that right. true? That's why I'm judging that I the ones think that so. don't. And I did say before that if a guy initiates, the woman has the ability to hold back and that will stop anything further from happening. So they have that they have that power, they have that upper hand, and I think that they have that control. And I don't know, I think most girls have it. I mean, if they slip up, it's just for fun or there's nothing more to it. There's also very, there's the emotional component. Mm. Oftentimes, if a girl slips up, it might be because they just feel like in a relationship, I know people have mentioned this to me before, that they feel like in a relationship versus the guy, it's just so hard to hold back physically. The girl just, that the physical leads to so much emotional closeness mm-hmm. that in a relationship, that feels very comforting to them. So it's interesting you're saying it that way because I said that once a girl feels more emotional connection, the physical part means so much more. As opposed to the physical, needing the physical f- for the other parts of relationship to build. Right. I hear that. But but I said before, Rabbi. Oh, IJ still here? Yeah, I'm still here. No, I'm this Welcome is, back, this IJ. Is, if the host <laughs> doesn't talk, it's you know, that's a successful show. But I was just saying and uh, I was just uh, I love this. This is this is this is where it's happening right now. And I, I hear Avery Avery side of this. Like he is he's expecting more from the girls. And I think people might fa- find that a bit tenuous. However, it's fair. If they want such high standards where I need a guy who does uh, this, who's Superman during the day and Superman at night and Clark Kent on the weekend, or whatever it is. It's so fair to hold them at a higher standard. This is what they, how they want to be treated. And, a, and obviously the ones who are more cool and chill, well, you know, shame your sisters. Sister shame. Tell them it's just not fair. You know, you got to stop this. You got to stop this, right? S- same, same issue with the dressing of the, the dressing up, the pro, the promiscuity. Um, can I, can I go back to that? What were you, you, I thought you had a question earlier. You were talking about yeah. promiscuity. So what, what was your question? Well, about that? Um, I think your question was like, how can you blame guys if girls are dressed yeah. attractively? Yeah. Attractively or provocatively? Well, that's what I was saying. Well, provocative, yeah, definitely provocative. <laughs> provocatively, and I was relating it to my story um, up in the up in the Catskill, or the Catskill, or up in the upstate, upstate New York, recent, you know, recently, where I was in a more modern um, place, and the women were dressed normal, and we went to we went over to the bungalow next door, which was a uh, very from black hat, and it was uh, psh, it was stripper central over there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It was I was sed- waiting for one of those. That's the only reason I agreed to come on. It was Sedaim. <laughs> it was Sedaim. It was it was it was like Avery's uh, apartment on the weekends. <laughs> what does this one do? One second. There you go. That, that was a little better. Which you're not invited to. <laughs> and, it, and it's it's just it's just no IJs allowed on the on the door. So you know we're we're trying to clear like we're trying to just bring this um, this this preconceived notion that the guys are so guilty, the guys are so guilty, it's all the guys full. We're trying to bring it down because the truth is it's pretty even. It's not just, oh, here's the guys, you know, the guys full. Well, IJ, you're 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 a hard you know, you're a a proud American, right? Why well, yes I am. <laughs> in America we believe in personal responsibility, right? If somebody tells you something and you do it, mm-hmm. 
you're you're held responsible, right? So if a girl is dressed provocatively, does that make it very, very difficult? Yes. And is that is that a problem on her end? Yes. Does that make it any better for you? Does that mean it's not your fault? No. Right? We believe in personal responsibility. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, again, you can, again, you're a human being. Truth you're a human being. When you, when you die after 120 and you go to God, he'll take that into account. You'll say to him, look, it was really hard and she was dressed really provocatively. That'll come into account. I like that. Okay, good. That will, but it's still wrong. Again, just just be honest with yourself. <laughs> it is the wrong no, thing. No, of course. So look, Every, of course, it, of look course. When, when, when things are difficult for us, the way, I, the way I live my life and the way I understand is that, is that that all goes in. It, it all goes into the, you know, the, the <laughs> court case. In. Exactly. It all goes into the court case. So okay, it's not just like, like, no, like this that. was wrong and therefore mm -hmm. you're going to hell. Yeah. But there is... It is wrong. Now, they're different. Uh, admit that it's wrong. Say, however, it was hard because of A, B, C, D, E. Sure, and that sure, goes in, sure. you know, the jury sure. will consider that. Sure, yeah, yeah. And that's what we're wrong. discussing here. We're, we're helping you prepare the case with some levity. We'll lower the fine. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else? So Rabbi Ewa, yeah. One thing we wanted to get into also. I'm not sure if this is a Shomer or a Sneas thing. Because some people are very, um, they'll never show their lack of Shomerness outside to anybody else. And I was always curious about this, the holding hands in public type of thing. Like, you talking about a married this, couple or you're talking about daters? Well, I mean, a married couple, it leads into married couple, it leads into daters. I was just curious myself. I'm like, why is it that people, and also it's again, it's, it goes back to expressing certain things. We don't talk about that in our community. We don't talk about sex like Rebecca the car earlier, who was talking about certain issues that come up when you get married. We don't, that nobody talks about it until after there are issues, and it's a big and problem. And I, I agree that that's a problem. Big, very big problem. Huge. Huge. Now, how does that play into a relationship? Holding hands, in, like holding hands in public. Was that something that you would refrain from doing generally? Advise. Are you asking on a personal level? No, I mean, what would you advise? I can, I can tell you on a personal level, yes. I find it very cringy. You find it cringy. I am totally oh, cringy. When I'm I, also, find it cringy too. I have no desire it's in low. public to hold hands with my wife. Um, however, again, you guys were to use the word judge. There are many places where it's common. So when I when I see it in the streets, in you know, obviously as we know, in certain neighborhoods, many <clears> people do it. In certain neighborhoods, you'll never see it. Um, so I, I I think that I, I don't think that is a black like you know the Shomer I kind of said is more black and white. That's not a black and white issue. No, there's certainly nothing usher about it. That's much more Ashkafa issue. And uh, again, if you're asking on a personal level, I wouldn't do it just because I find it cringeworthy. I'm like, mm, you know. Mm. Well, but, that's uh, that Jewish guilt that we're, we're no, that it's we're not guilt. About. This is not no, no, no. It's just maybe your it expression. Is, it's it's like just, yeah, it's, it's like I, I, the same way I wouldn't, speak, you know, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, kissing in public and things like that. I just, you hmm. know, again, is there something usser about it? I don't think it's usser. It's not. I just find it's it not, weird. It's not. Uh, it's not. You know, breaking Shabbos, it's like not Shabbos stick, you know. You know so, it's a similar idea. But for me, it's just, it's, I, not, it's not something I have to, it's not a fight of mine. It's not a battle. Oh, man, I wish I could do this, but I'm just, people would look <laughs> at me weird. I just, I kind of shiver when I think about it. However, is there something inherently wrong with it? No. Halakhically, I'm talking strictly from a halakhic perspective. And you see many people doing it. And uh, if they're in a neighborhood where that's fine, I don't, you know. That's uh, that's their prerogative. I love it. I feel like we've hit the crescendo of this uh, of this topic, Avery. Holding hands in public. I also disagree. I also frown upon it like myself. I'm not. I wouldn't hold my hands in public with anyone either. Or in private. From what? Joke. From what? But <laughs> from what perspective? From what perspective? From the fact that everyone hates to see a happy married couple. Is that you know? it? It makes you sick. Come on. <laughs> let's be honest. Well, let's be honest. The people that are holding hands in public, are they also holding hands in the home? So no. I, I, you know, I, I, want I to used seen. to hear that a lot, and I don't know that that's true. I'm not saying it's people not, used to, but I, I'm saying what's the reasoning behind? Is it because there's a need on the Well, why do people go, it? Paige, why do people go on Instagram and say, after seven years, oh, I love my wife, you're the best. Like, who needs to see that so, except so for the people uh, in the relationship? That's an interesting thing, point to bring up. And the answer is no one, just the spouse. And you know what? The spouse might not mm -hmm. appreciate, might not even know that that's being expressed and mm -hmm. that's being said about them. Okay, they know if their hand is being held in public, but do they care more about that or they care more about how they're treated in their home and they're fine with it not being in public and doesn't change their relationship, doesn't make their relationship stronger when they're out in public holding hold hands. I don't know, personal. Yeah, no, I, I, I've heard that a lot. You know that they say the people who are all like, Touchy feely in public. That really, that's indicative of a problem. I don't necessarily know that that's true. Some people are just more touchy feely. 
Yeah. And they enjoy walking and holding well, hands. What's, well, what's your two perspective? Because Avery and I, we had, this, we had uh, discussed this uh, intensely, intensely about, uh, you know, maybe why singles are more inclined to break Shomer. And Ahuva last episode had... had why they're more inclined... More then. inclined to break Shomer because it was it was it was perhaps indicative it was not indicative of any kind of any kind of background that they had, and you know. But Avery and I disagreed. We said no, no, no. Like from the girls we've ha- you know had relationships with, from the girls we've seen, we can tell you that girls who want to break Shomer, guys who want to break Shomer, very relatable for the background. Remember this? No, he's, he's not. I mean, I, not, I listened yeah. to the episode he's and not. I remember it. Yeah. I, the expression gets, gets girls who want to break Shomer, guys who want to break Shomer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that's talking about. I think that breaking Shomer <laughs> is not something people necessarily, I mean, again. Or, or, with, or not it, even breaking the, Shomer, just having an issue. With Shomer, right. So not wanting to break Shomer, just the yeah, people just who do break Shomer. struggle with it. In my opinion, nothing to do with background. Sex drive. Sex drive. Oh, wow. Okay, I disagree with nothing that. I said it had to do with background. You can be from the most cold background, warm yeah. background, Hasidish, right, Litvish. Think about I it. very much disagree. I, I think it has nothing to do with frumkite either. The frumest people slip up on this to the most, yeah. you know, it is, it, it is, that's the way we're made. And we have a primal drive for this. And you really, that's why right, right, you really, really have to work hard on it. My disagreement came from, like, I think it starts with words of affection, starts with saying, I love you, and then a little handholding. And that comes from a family culture. In some families. So you think that if you come from a family culture where they don't say a lot of I love yous and everything like that, but and your relationship hugs. is moving in the way your relationship is... Yeah, but when you hug your mother, it's not in a sexual way. When you hug your brother, it's not in a sexual way. Not the point. Way. When you say goodbye to your mom, you come into the door. You say, hi, mo- hi mom, give them a kiss and say, you know, something or give them a hug. Right? When you leave when you leave somewhere, let's say you want a trip, you know? Mm-hmm. Some and people, it just never would happen. Right, but you some think Some people in relationships will expect that. Every you think that if leave. a person, like I end all my conversations with, to my parents with, I love you and I'm a big hugger with my parents and my family. Mm-hmm. Um, now you think that would make me, a person like me, more inclined to break Shomer? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I completely disagree. Mm. Well, actually, I think that the fact that you disagree and you were in that situation and you had that quote unquote not Shomer relationship within your family proves a point because it's a completely different relationship you're talking about right here. And a completely li- like different place where it's coming from, you know. In a mm-hmm. sense, it's almost like natural. It's like on a, like we grew up doing this, you know, keeping this or not keeping this. But like in a relationship, you're dating. It's not like you're used to, you know, building a relationship not being Shomer. Mm-hmm. That that what you're used to is being Shomer. So the non Shomer has, you know, the fact that you're a touchy family at home has no relevance to. I just meant it. It means more for a girl in their terms of expectation what they would expect. From you, meaning every everybody goes back to their family dynamic in a relationship in some way, psychologically. Right? We all refer back to our but relationship with our dating. parents, and even dating. Dating your relationship is based on how your relationship. The reason you're attracted to someone is because they sometimes remind you of somebody from your past. Well, what? Yeah. Right. They remind you of someone from your past. They remind you of the way you grew up. Maybe you know that's where the attraction first starts, according to the psychology. From what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, but. For a girl, they will expect you to treat them in the way that your family treated them. So if it's a hug after a date or, you know, to be extra cuddly and warm, that's how they're going to expect to be treated. If it's a girl that's not like that, that doesn't do that. That's they how they're going to be expected to be treated maybe if they're not Shomer. But yeah. if they're Shomer, oh, you're saying? Even if they are. No, it but will, even it if will they lead are. Them, it will lead them to they, break they, Shomer they, quicker I, because I, that's what they, they are want. Shomer, that's my opinion. Then, I think the veracity okay, there saying, is, yeah. is, is, um, I think yeah. it, it's about, I think it's know, pretty on target. That's my opinion. Right. I don't think that. Or maybe it'll be tougher for her. Maybe it will be more tough. Well, that's right. the benefit so of this show that we can, quicker. we can maybe come they here get and sooner. agree to disagree. You know, maybe they'll, you know, what, you've, maybe it'll just be tougher, yeah. and gonna, they'll want it more. All right, some 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 <laughs> phenomenal phenomenal points, uh, extraneous to say the least. <laughs> uh, to uh, uh, so actually, you know, it's funny. I, 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 everyone should go check out the web page, um, uh, shidduchpodcast dot com under articles. We got some really good stuff. Uh, we have a really funny scene from How I Met Your Mother. It's creeper or romantic, okay? Creeper or romantic over there. Uh, check that out. See uh, see how ambiguous things can be uh, in in the eyes of the of the beholder. And uh, also, also another one on the webs on the web page. Um, 
listen to this guy. Um, he talks about how his daughter really started to pray, and she found her Bashir. Pretty, pretty insane story. You gotta listen to it. Uh, it's uh, shidduchpodcast.com under articles. Shidduchpodcast.com under articles. Hey guys, this is Yona from the Nobody Talks Shidduchim podcast. I want to take a moment to tell you about I Like Ike Marketing. I Like Ike Marketing serves all marketing and communication needs, including web design, branding, graphics, Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns, logos, social media, and more. To get the full deets and explore their services, go to likeike.net or call. 516-399-1000. We thank our, our contributors for coming on. Rabbi AY, thank you so much. Paige, thank, thank you, you so much thank for coming me. on. It's Amazing. good to be here in person. It's good to yeah, be here finally, in finally. We, we fa- mm. You came to the right studio. You know, last time he ended up, uh, he ended up somewhere else and uh, they had to quarantine him for No, but here I feel, I feel right, I feel right at home here. Yeah, it's it's very, very close to home. Uh, Avery, thanks for being with us this episode. Yeah, thank you for not kicking me off again. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You're out of here. All right, anyway, um, so hopefully you all enjoyed this episode of the Nobody Talk Shidduchim podcast. Our website, shidduchpodcast.com. Our Instagram, at Nobody Talk Shidduchim. Too bad it's a nine days because we had a great song to play. We can't did. touch this. We did. But Ooh, it's too bad. Bad. We already did that one, no? Mm-hmm. I know. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I usually end off, um, happy face, smiley face, silly face. This is the Nobody Talk Shidduchim podcast. Are you on Shidduch Date Burnout? Getting some anxiety or just need someone to talk to about all those DMs and WhatsApps? Ahuva Shandelman is a licensed psychotherapist and the founder of Holy Shid. She treats clients with care, empathy, and a ton of shit. Ahuva can be reached anywhere as she treats clients virtually and is also based in Rockland County for office hours. She can be contacted if you're interested via email, ahuvashandelman at gmail.com or DM her on Insta at holy two underscores shit. IJ and Avery love her. You will too. Alchi's Media Network.